let's explore our packaging in a more artistic way. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today we're having a look at Defemarembe and this is prompt number 11. The prompt today is a handmade stamp and a jumbo tag. So my packaging here that I want to work with for my junk journaling challenge is a piece of card from a cereal packet which will form my tag, my jumbo tag, quite a big wide tag and this is um, a thick foam protecting material that I had some plates that were stacked up I bought some plates from Ikea and this was the packaging that just sort of stopped the plates from getting damaged when you brought them home in a box they came in a box and so that was the packaging that divided the plates and then this was some uh, a cut off bit from another bit of packaging and this sort of similar material so it's a foam plastic foam so that's the sort of stuff that I tend to hang on to in case because it sort of feels like it's got a use but ultimately not sure but it's quite a thin tactile flexible material so it can be sewn as well so you could make pockets out of it sort of quite useful I don't dislike the feel it's sort of warm to touch insulating <laughs> anyway that's the, what I'm going to use to make my stamp so I've already attempted to do one here and I've just got a bit of packaging I've cut out a leaf shape and I've stuck it on top of the card so I'll just show you how I got to that point. So let's take this and we'll take a pair of scissors and I'm just, I'll do a slightly longer one and just cutting out a leaf shape and then I just it's got different texture on each side so this one I use the finer texture and I think this one I'll use the larger texture. I'm just going to do a blob of Fabri-Tac because that dries quickly but any, any glue will do if you're prepared to allow it to sit and you know set. And then that was just a bit of stuff pulled off of uh, an envelope pa packaging. And I'm just going to... What happened there? Oh, did it flip over? <laughs> oh, it flipped over. You should have said, right, try again. So we'll stick it on. Well, it's not going to fit. Hang on. We'll stick it on like that. And I'll just trim that bit because we don't, we don't need to have it. OK, all right, so I've got two leaf shapes and then it's the toucan. So I'm going to tear him out roughly like a fussy tear and then we can have the toucan coming in and joining us on this tag. So we've been looking at the Marianne North story and toucans, in my mind, are going to come into her story when she visits Brazil in 1880 so that's not one of the first places that she visits so it's a bit later in her travelling plan but the Toucans has dictated this so we will go with it the first place she visited was um, America and then Canada and then Jamaica that's on her first leg of her journey when she first embarked on this whole exciting adventure but before that she was she was um, getting her affairs in order at home she was mourning the death of her father and um, that was in 1869 and then what happened is she went to Italy and that's where she just went away to hibernate and, and grieve and be quiet and paint and just absorb and immerse herself in the 
natural world which felt felt like the right thing for her to do and here I've got some eco print fabric which I have used with some leaves and things from my garden back in the summer and this is a rusty nail image so I think that's quite interesting I might even have it that way up and then that mark will be up there and I think I'll going to put my toucan on here and it just be a very rustic large tag and then I would like to do some stamping onto fabric which I thought would be a bit different. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac and just sort of spread it out. So I think if you're wanting to go away and hide and just be quiet as a quiet we say a quiet crafting space just to get away from it all doesn't have to be a grief it could be you know just modern day life anything really I think Italy is a lovely place to go because lots of beautiful things to paint in Italy and Tuscany and places like that and we know that she traveled extensively all over Europe with her father so when she embarked on a travel period um and her adventures and to the tropics and all this sort of thing she did it alone and she didn't go to Europe alone because she'd already done that so that sort of didn't you know this wasn't part of it this was just for her to go and be quiet and she she just needed that as we all need time to ourselves to process things it's it's no good uh, trying to carry on you need to give yourself a break and come up with a plan of how you're going to tackle things so that's what she did try to find a piece of paper let's use this right <clears throat> I just want to sort of spread that out I don't want to have I want it tacky but I don't want it seeping through okay in fact, what we'll do is we will... Oh, I was going to... I was going to stick it on the other way and be all clever and then I would have had the craft paper side up. Never mind. I'll have to cover that with something else now. I'll just go and get another piece of paper. Right, I have found some papers. I just thought that might work, but I think it's boring. And then I found that, which I think will be fine. And then I found this, which I didn't even know I had anything as old as this. But it's 1898. 1898. Now, Marianne North died in 1890. So that's amazing, isn't it? That I actually have a piece of paper talking all about the post office. And, uh, yeah, that's really, that's, so that's, that's lovely. That's actually quite significant. So, um, you know, we can see that all, uh, very, very delicate. So I will look after that and perhaps we can bring some of that in. It obviously needs to be stuck down, but might be quite interesting to put it into the journal on the page just to show something from that era, um, albeit, Mm, official well she did deal with the post office service all the time that was very important to her story so there we go that just popped out of uh, a pile of papers okay i'm going to have a look at this archival ink which is um a white it says a moonlit white and it does say it's good for porous surfaces so this is a porous surface i have no idea i really probably should test it on a little corner piece here so let's do that first and just check covered up quite nicely okay let's just try it oh that is very pale okay all right, well, if nothing else, it would give me a guide and then I could paint onto the fabric. That isn't going to be strong enough for my liking. I think what the best thing is to do is paint onto it directly with... 
Uh, let's go with the gesso. So let's do it this way and let's um, let's just go with what we know. So we're going to put paint onto fabric, that'll be fine. This is a sticker backing. I've added a small amount of paint there. I've got my paintbrush at the ready. And then I can be like Marianne North doing a bit of painting onto my canvas, which is plastic packaging. And we're just, I don't know that I do want a thin layer. I think I want a nice, nice thick layer, actually. Let's just see how we get on. So I'm going to put it up there and push that down and just, here goes nothing, you know, let's have a look. Oh, that's interesting, actually, okay. So the, the streaks in there come from the paintbrush. That's interesting. And another interesting fact about the painting that Marianne did. She didn't have a great deal of formal painting technique beyond a few lessons from the Australian artist that introduced her to um, oil paint. Uh, Marianne North had an interesting way of applying paint to canvas. She used to get the paint from the tube and directly put it onto a paint palette, but also she would directly put it onto the canvas and then she would mix the colour on the canvas. Well, that isn't really the way to do it. However, it was her way of doing it and nobody really knows if she had been taught to do it that way or she developed her own method and why she did it that way. Um, we know that she was travelling with all of these paints and she had to be mindful of the temperatures and that's why oil painting was so brilliant. If she tried to use her watercolour it just wouldn't have survived the humidity of all the places that she did travel to. And so, oops. So, uh, her method was to apply the paint directly onto the canvas and then mix it when when she had it on there. So if, if it were me now, painting on a canvas, I've applied my paint directly on there and then from there I would then mix in another colour so I would put it on, I would put it on there straight from the tube so no messing about no mixing on another palette just straight onto the canvas and then mixing it in from there and she used to do this with surprising accuracy she used to get the really fine detail and actually doing that now it wasn't that bad, it was, you can understand that it could work. And then she would build up layers and she would apply the paint in a very thick manner, not, not very fine layers building them up and building them up like a glaze, like other artists. She would apply it on thick and fast and get it done. Okay, so... That's what the green was like. And uh, yeah, so that's what she did. So it is coming out quite leaf-like with the streaks of the brush. So we'll go again over here. And just produce this patterning. I'm quite liking that. So I think what I'll do is... I'll have a little go at the smaller one I've got here. This is turned the other way and there's more of a mottled effect. I'm now wondering whether that could have had a colour to it that looked like a seed pod. Let's have a look. Oh yes, that, that's quite good. So that gives a denser colour. So I'm thinking I could go over that with something red and then that will pick out the red in the toucan okay. 
Uh, I've got some scrap bits which I might pull in. I've got, I've got this which I like. I'm just going to glue my toucan down because actually thinking about it, Brazil has coffee, doesn't it? So, and coffee pods are red. I think the coffee berries are red. I think they are. I'm fairly sure the toucans like to eat red berries. <laughs> this toucan does anyway. So I'm going to make this my my sort of berry. Berry colour here. And we'll just put a bit of vibrant red on there oh well that's that's pretty good I like that I like the overlap so let's do that again and this time we'll go over the other side and we'll have another one up here That's that's really cool. Overlapping here. Fan. Fantastic. That's my mark making on there. That's a rather cool. Very happy with that. I'm going to put my toucan there, I'm going to sew round, I'm going to sew round here and then what I might do is come in with some other stamps over the top in black and just go over to bring some highlight in and that just be a really fabulous backdrop. Okay, so the other, the other idea is just to cut out, before I sew round, just to cut out some fun leaf shapes from this well, it's just a drop sheet really of it's just a sheet where I cleaned off my brayer so it's just a scrap scrap of stuff and then I think what I'll do is that I'll have these shapes echoing the marks that I've made just to bring in a bit more detail and this one's going to be slightly offbeat because it's blue, but that's all right. And I've just realized I've got this bit here off to the side as well. So that's okay, we'll have a bit of this bright green that we used the other day. We've exhausted that idea of mark making so we'll just see what the sewing brings. Okay back from the sewing machine I went a little bit wild <laughs> with the sewing and I've done um, quite a nice effect there I think with a quilting technique going back and forth over the leaves and just having that marking behind is really really fun it's given it a whole another dimension that I absolutely adore so that's been really good fun and this is an experimental um, journal of techniques and ideas things that we haven't really done before really pushing some boundaries with the paper craft as well bringing in paper craft but other skills that we may have picked up over the years as well so that is kind of cool what I don't like is my sewing round here as much so I want to echo what I've already got here I'm using this blue because I had to bring that in because that's all the colour that was on the scrap so I've got blue here and green I'm just going to uh, make some marks here that's what I want to do just just want to 
loosely make some marks here. Takes up more paint than you think when you've got fabric because um, it sucks it up so you need a little bit more than you think really. Got quite a lot of this. I don't seem to use the lime green. I did over there. I'll just go all the way around, highlighting the toucan. What I'll do is I'll have a few, um, maybe have a few here just to bring that shape in like that that sort of brings it in a bit more and maybe two up there and I think I'm going to have this is a, this is going to be a tag so that's okay and then I'll bring this lime green in a bit more. That's it. And then he's looking rather wonderful, isn't he? He's like he's being, I don't know, sort of honoured. We're honoured. We're honoured that toucan. <laughs> and just come in with a blob of gold on the top. So he's quite a regal bird there looking like he's got the gold. <laughs> and then maybe we'll do it up here as well. Bit much, bit over the top if I'm honest. Not really my usual style but none of this is. It's the fun of it isn't it really? So there we go. I mean, it's all wet and it's got, we have got gold splats up there as well. So it sort of ties in. And then what I thought I'd do is I'll put in my eyelet, also gold. <laughs> and um, so the inspiration there is South America. She did go to Brazil and um, she painted a hundred paintings in Brazil. She was that impressed with it. It was absolutely amazing. That was in 1880 that she did that. And in order to get around all of these places, I am going to go into that story. I'm going to do that in the next prompt when we're talking about postcards, because that will link into everything and then we'll all understand a bit more about her. Uh, so this is certainly inspired by some of her paintings very loosely. And I'll just show you. I've got some postcard paintings here where she would bring in the leaves from that top corner and then drape it in. So I've, I've very loosely done that with a similar composition of bringing the leaves in from that corner and then put my bird further down. And she's put her bird further down. Obviously hers is awesome and mine is a hot mess, but it was fun. I had fun. So there we go. <laughs> I'm going to put a hole in here and be a bit controversial because... Marianne North was very controversial. She didn't do anything by the book. She did things her own way. So mine is a side dangly tag. Not going to be there and mess up my sewing. It's going to be like that, swinging about. How fun. Down. Pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. That's how I want it. There we go. So that's how that's happening. And then it's a giant jumbo sort of swingy tag. I love that. That is really fun. That was so much fun. And then the stamps there. So what I could do, I could embellish them a bit more, but I just love that rustic, loose sort of idea and focusing in on the leaves and just, yeah, everything. Really happy with that. That's how it looks on the back. And then what I could do is put something there but pro probably what it will be is an, an embellished side tuck or 
top loading you know it's just it's a tag but it will probably be a pocket so it's a pocket tag to show off Marianne North's trip to an extensive stay in Brazil later on in life so I think you know we'll probably have something here I think that just looks lovely there actually. I think I found the first page just it just opened and the colours all work, doesn't it? So that is pretty good there. And then uh, yeah, I think then I think what we will have here is I could even hinge it to the page. I could have a belly band. I'm not sure, but it's going to go there for the minute and then I can think about it uh, when I put some other ephemera pockets and things in there. So that, and it needs to dry anyway, so I don't want to do too much to it. But I just want you to see what it would look like. So something like that in this journal, it would probably go there. And here is um, a picture of her trees but she went to later and that is California so that's going to be there so it's starting to take shape it's starting to take shape alternatively it could go over here but I don't like that no I liked it where I liked it no that's the that's right Yep, so that's where it wants to be, so there it stays. OK, guys, so thanks very much. That was prompt 11, and we'll do 12 tomorrow, and I will be back very soon, and we'll catch up. It's been a bit difficult to try and do these every day. It's going to continue to get harder because of the children coming back um, from school and from the holidays, so uh, next week's going to be a bit more uh, tricky to do them every day, but uh, we'll see how we go, and uh, I will do them all. It just might not be every single day. You might get two videos in a day. So if you're enjoying the Defemerember prompts and you'd like to follow along with more crafty inspiration and tips and hear about the stories and the adventures of Marianne North in the 1800s, then perhaps consider clicking on the bell icon to be alerted when the videos come up. It's going to be a little bit all over the place and haphazard as I manage a busy month that is December, but I will be completing all the prompts and putting them in the playlist. You'll find them all there for you and you can watch them at your own pace and your own leisure in January as well if you want to. So these are some fun mixed media, different different style of crafting, bringing in lots of techniques. I hope you've enjoyed this and above everything else, guys. Just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.